Are you and your friends wondering where to go next in PAL world? If so, you can hardly be blamed, as beyond the brief tutorial, you're not told where to go or what to do. Luckily for you, we spent the time exploring Palpago's Island, tackling the toughest fights currently available in the early access build, and mapping out the most efficient order to tackle them in. Here's our guide on how to beat the main story content in PAL world. In PAL World's current build, beyond leveling up, filling up your PAL deck, and tackling dungeons, there's also a main story path that involves seeking out and defeating five of the toughest PAL trainers in the land. You may not have caught it during the earliest moments of your playthrough, but at the very beginning of the game when you walk out of the ruins and find the Plateau of Beginnings waypoint, you can actually see all five of the spires you'll need to travel to in order to defeat these bosses. There's one close by directly in front of you, one on some icy mountains to the right, one atop the distant volcanoes to the left, one all the way to the right in a desertous region, and finally, another one in the distance on an even taller, even snowier mountain. By traveling to each of these places and taking on the fearsome bosses within, you'll have overcome the toughest content currently available triggering all of the minimalistic story cutscenes in the process. The first spire is part of the tutorial, where you'll fight Zoe and her pal Grisbolt at the Rain Syndicate Tower. Getting there is just a hop and a skip away from where you begin the game, but before facing her, you'll probably want to be at least level 10, as you're expected to whittle down over 30,000 HP in less than 10 minutes to beat her. Grisbolt uses lightning attacks, but as this encounter is part of the tutorial, this one's a bit of a pushover. Next up, you'll want to head to the snow-covered mountains northeast of your current position, to the Free Pal Alliance Tower. Before heading there, you'll need to level up enough to be able to craft cold-resistant armor to survive the frigid conditions of the surrounding area. There, you'll find Lily and her grass-type pal, Lyleen. This encounter is significantly more difficult than the first one, and we recommend being at least level 25 before attempting it as the boss starts with 69,000 health, with just 10 minutes to take it all out. It's also a good idea to bring a Fire-type pal or two to torch this flower. The next boss is a massive leap forward in terms of difficulty, and we don't recommend attempting it before you and your pals have reached at least level 40, probably 45 just to be safe. Before you can head to this area, you'll need to craft armor that can withstand some serious heat, or the lava will burn you to a crisp. In the westernmost part of the map, amid volcanic peaks that channel Mordor itself, you'll find the Eternal Pyre Tower. Within it awaits Axel and Orzerk, a lightning and dragon type pal with some seriously deadly moves and a health bar that's nearly double the size of the previous boss, a staggering 130,000 health, with the usual 10 minute time limit. Ice and ground type pals both do well here. Once you've beaten Axel, you're ready to head to the complete opposite end of the map in the deserts of the Far East, where you'll face Marcus and Phalaris in the PIDF Tower. With more than 146,000 health, it's best to not even attempt this fight until you and your pals are level 45. Phalaris is a fire-type pal, so bring all the strongest water pals you've got to improve your chances. Oh, and Phalaris flies around, so definitely be sure to bring some guns and a whole lot of ammo. Finally, you'll need to head to the far north to another icy peak called the Astral Mountains and look for the PAL Genetic Research Tower. This is the final test for you and your pals, as you face off against the baddest of them all, Victor and Shadowbeak. Shadowbeak is a flying dark type pal with more than 200,000 health so you'll need as many max level dragon pals as possible to take him on. Also, it might go without saying that you really shouldn't try this fight until you're level 50, and so are all your pals. This is the last boss currently in the game after all. Once you've taken down the final boss, you'll have beaten all the main story content currently available. Though, if you remember the opening moments of the campaign, you might be wondering about this massive tree that can be seen in the distance. Well, it's pretty likely this area will serve as the location for an even tougher battle in the future. But if you try to approach it now, unfortunately you'll run into a red wall that can't be breached. 
For now, it seems, we're just gonna have to wait and see what lies beyond. And there you have it. That's how to take down all five bosses and clear all the story beats currently available in Pal World. For more, check out all of our Pal World guides, such as the 10 best pals to catch and how to level up fast. And for everything else gaming, keep it right here on IGN.